What's going on, man? T.J. Miller. Oh, no. Sit in the, sit in the middle there. That, here. That mic sucks. Hi. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? T.J. Hey, Miller. Hey, hey, buddy. How are Mike you, sir? Are you what's going on, man? some music for us today? I brought my slide trombone. <laughs> you did? <laughs> because that's a big part of my act now. It is? Why did you decide to... to... And it's interesting because I don't play the slide trombone at all. When did you get it? To... I don't know. I think I was high. I don't oh, know. yeah? I point to you. Just point at me. Uh, <laughs> you like drugs, I right? was like this fellow. <laughs> you like trombones. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had a slide whistle, and I was like in Canada, and I was very high, and I was like, we need to take this up a notch. Right. People come, so they expect what I did. a show. Right, exactly. Yeah, I get it. So. And I'm the type of guy that carries a... Oh. Uh, I love this. I love a fucking train whistle. Because it's just it's just a block of wood. It doesn't it doesn't seem like it should make such a great so train I, noise. I took because I live in New York City now. Yeah. Um, I live in Greenwich Village and I took the train for the first time to a gig and as the train pulled out of the station, <laughs> I went <laughs> And this guy turned around and he goes, seriously? <laughs> and I just looked him straight in the eyes and I was like, yeah, seriously. Serious. This, that is the only appropriate time to do I just that. Like, you were ready, to, get, what you were ready to possibly get into a fight over your train whistle. Because, yeah, I do take this shit very I, yeah. seriously. The train is, is leaving the station and that is the sound yeah, that accompanies sound. that moment. <laughs> but how could, you, how could that... Safety first. How could that sound not bring you back to like... I feel like if I were on a train and I heard a train whistle, I'd be back to like a little kid again who like yeah, thinks trains so are exciting. This yeah, guy he, did not look like he enjoyed childhood or children. It was a couple of, <laughs> a couple of quick toots. Yeah, that's like it all. Wasn't even, yeah. It didn't even last a, toot, a long toot. time. That's, that's what I can understand. A couple of toots, bro. A couple of quick toots. That's what I should have said. Oh, what? I can't do a couple of toots? Over here, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't like I was like. <laughs> oh, seriously, seriously, and sir! I'd be like, you're right, you're right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you know what? You're station. absolutely right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Next time you should do it until one. someone complains. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm gonna do that. I might just start doing it all the time, like when a taxi leaves or anything like that. <laughs> so yeah, so just they turn around and they're like, seriously, <laughs> have you just been like, I want to incorporate more musical instruments into my act, or is there part of you that's gonna be like, you know what, I want to, I want to actually become a real musician? Musician. No, absolutely you don't have not. any no, desire. I, care. I used to play the saxophone for a really long time. Yeah, but now I just play. I tell a story where I was in Canada, and um, the, this the case for a trombone looks like a gun case. And in Canada, they don't love guns as much as we do, and yeah. so um, they would always be like, "What is that?" And I would be like, "It's a slide trombone." And they would say, "What is it for?" Uh, like, are for you in a, are, it's are for you in a band? Audiences. Yeah, are you in a band or something? It's it's for strangulation. Um, are you in a band or something? And I'm like, nope. And they go, they go. So what is it for? And then I could not help myself. What an existential question. I, 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 I took it out, and then I would put it together, as it's like in front of the ticketing agent. And then I'm like, it's for this. And then I would try and play it. And I did that at the TSA. So I tell that whole story, and it's actually it ends pretty embarrassingly. But you'll have to come to Levity Live at West Nyack to be able to see Smart. it. So Smart. But, but they're right. straight shows tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. You're going straight to the gig from here. That's why you brought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I carry it he now all the time. TJ no, no. really gets there. Early. I, I carry it all the time. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I was just carrying it around. Where are you go? Just filled with so crackers. Like, I was, I was announcing myself throughout Nor'easter. That was the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So if you just do spots or something, like if you're just doing a 10 minute spot somewhere, are you bringing the slide trombone and pulling out? All I brought the... it to stand up New York, and I <laughs> did a spot there. It just seems like a lot. You only oh, have that yeah. It's that way too much. For right. those That's why people. I think it's so funny is right. that the audience is like, why is this guy <laughs> doing all of this in eight minutes? Like, it really is. He's like... spending two minutes putting the, th the fucking thing together. You're jealous of the fact that musicians have a bunch of shit they have to carry around. Like, you got tired of just showing up yeah, to gigs. Yeah, I, I was like, without enough, it's it's sort of enough case. without carrying this thing. My limbs are too free. Yeah, but it is pretty fun. To, and then I do an impression of the United States government. Um, using the slide trombone. Oh, that's so great. That's pretty fun. That's my only political joke. That's the only thing that I do. But And you do it through a slide trombone. Yeah, I do yeah. it just with a slide trombone. But what's great, too, is like the idea that if people didn't know who you were, they'd be like, what is this? Like a This guy just learned how to do comedy? Like, why would anybody do this in 10 minutes? But now everybody knows that you've been doing this for a long time. You've got specials right. out there. Like, exactly. There's no reason T.J. Miller specifically... 
Yeah, should be doing that. It's not like I was like, all right, well, now I got to start doing stand up, so I guess I better put some trombone (laughs) in it or something like that. (laughs) I think, I think actually it was just like, what is the most absurd thing that I can possibly do? And uh, it is the slide trombone. And then somebody pointed out to me the other day, they go, well, aren't all trombones slide trombones? And I thought that was good the point. fucking weirdest thing. It is a good point, <laughs> but what a weird bone to pick. <laughs> where you're like, it's a real bone. yeah, yeah. And then Kate was like, you should name it tuba. <laughs> yeah, this and is so tuba. I'm like, this, this is, is my slide, slide trombone, trombone tuba. tuba. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Benson and TJ Miller, one mind, two people. Two comedians, one mind. What do other comics think of the uh, incorporation of musical instruments? Do they get it or do they think it's stupid? Well, I'm the one who's always like, uh, sometimes I trick people, especially at colleges, and say that I'm Carrot Top's cousin. Right. And so it's just in our blood, you know, it's just in the family. <laughs> right. Uh, you gotta, you but I, I, think other, I think other comedians. In trombone or not, kind of look at my act and they're like, "What the fuck is he doing?" I right. don't know what he's talking about exactly. Um, but yeah, I've been tromboning it, train whistling it. You know, who knows what's next? And that's great because for a while it was water. Speaking of, can I have a Red Bull or a water or something? There's a water right there. Yeah. Yeah, help yourself. <laughs> and it's Nestle Pure Life. Yeah, do you feel like you have there to... There used to be Nestle Sort of Life. And they went, <laughs> yeah. they the went to Nestle. They finally got it to Pure Life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, takes a while, like... but it's got to be aged. Do you feel like since you did... <laughs> <laughs> it's Cherry Cascaged. <laughs> Mm, since Nestle. You did so wow, much this fun. water has a real nice neck. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the nose on this. Like, nose, that's what it I doesn't meant. feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love neck. <laughs> <laughs> neck, yeah! The neck on this wine is delicious. You're just talking about the bottle neck. That's it. <laughs> Do you feel like since you did so much water stuff on the special yeah, yeah. that you kind of have to retire water? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was yeah. kinda, but, you know, every so often I'll just like... I just think it's really, really fun. It it always struck Looks me. Looks refreshing too. It is refreshing. <laughs> uh, it's pure life. Right. You know what I mean? It yeah. is just it's absolutely pure life. Yeah. Um, I just always think it's so funny when people are afraid of getting wet from water <laughs> because it doesn't yeah. do anything. It doesn't stain you. No. It's gonna dry. Just no dry residue. Stuff. So that's what's so funny. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, it's not. You don't want to get no. wet and no. then go out in the cold. No, mm-hmm. but you could. But you could handle it indoors. It's not like you're getting soaked. Yeah, you just dry yeah. off by the time you have to go out. Yeah, yeah. but during yeah. nor'easter, I was kind of walking around, just sp- splashing pure life all over me, <laughs> <laughs> just to feel alive. You sure. know what I mean? Purely alive. Sure. People sit in the splash zone on purpose at Shamu shows. Yeah. You know, like so people. Some people love it. And some people like it. Some wet. people love to yeah, get yeah. themselves wet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. But I, I found that if I spray the audience with right. water, like if I do the joke. Where I smash the bottle and the water like sprays out. If I do that into the audience, it really pisses people off. Yeah, people again, get upset. People don't like to. Some people don't like to be wet. They're like, now I have water all over me. What's going to happen? It's going <laughs> to evaporate in a little while. But they had no problem laughing at you when you were all wet. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Really. Exactly. Nice. And then the one of the biggest criticisms. Um, well, I get two criticisms about my uh, HBO comedy special. One is that it's not funny, oh, and then two <laughs> tough. is that, uh, <laughs> that people will be like, "Look, the water <laughs> from the editing is like one time you're wet on this side of your body, and then another time you're wet on this side of the body," and they're like, "It's very confusing. Did you do that on purpose?" It really, really disturbs them. The lack of continuity. Wait, it does fuck up continuity to do water bits. Yeah, that's very true. You but know, who cares? But you still picked bits it's called from the meticulously two, ridiculous. Two right, tapings? from the two, yeah, yeah, two yeah. tapings. I just like that most comics like specifically like nitpick to make sure that you cannot tell those are two shows spliced together. Right. Whereas you're like, just throw whatever jokes from wherever and just put them in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's because people are used to movies. And Doug, you love movies. I do. Uh, <laughs> but Let's I, bring Doug into this. I, when I did my, I, my Netflix special, we did two tapings, but I got high before the first one and in between. So I was like higher in the second one. Oh. So if you watch it, you can tell the difference between, you know, you can go, oh, that's the second show. Like, your your eyes are so red. red. <laughs> one of my eyes is completely closed. And, and it's suddenly not red and then red again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you use from both shows? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, and you can tell the difference if you're looking for it. I you know? did I did meticulously ridiculous um 
after, and I warmed up the night before at a club in Denver, which I'm sure you played Comedy Works. Great club. And uh, it was better than the special. So if I do another one, I'm going to do it there. But that pissed me off so much. I did two shows. Both of them were better than the actual special. So I don't know yeah, what happens. Yeah, that happens. There. A lot it of people, happen. when they do a special, they, they go out with that same material until the special people yeah. see it. Yeah. And then you just you're kicking yourself because you're like, oh, it's going so much better here. Should have done this one. The, the this should have been I filmed. recorded it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Why did I not record that Omaha Funny Bone? <laughs> 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 but I really, uh, yeah. And I know some people. Although the example that I'm about to give is Pete Holmes, and he's a big fan of Pete Holmes, and uh, <laughs> he, uh, but he, he... Crashing! He recorded two. <laughs> Pete Holmes! <laughs> uh, he recorded two shows, and one of them was so good that he just used that one. Yeah, yeah. He didn't, like, bastard. edit or anything. I know, that but is, he is lucky. A, but he is a big, I, like I said, he's a big he fan is a of big Pete Holmes, so himself, he would know. Yeah. I mean, think about his big, like, his first idea was, like, we'll do a talk show where we name it after me, yeah. and then when that doesn't work out, he's like, okay, Judd, what if we did a sick about yeah, me, me and my five life. years ago yeah. <laughs> and then the next yeah. thing he does is going to be like him in the future right. like yeah. in 2065 <laughs> I'll play and Pete then, Holmes and then I've once Pete. that's run its course <laughs> then he'll go to the present right, right there yeah no it's a lot longer than five years his character in Crashing do you like remember, it's so weird do you remember Herman's head <laughs> yeah. that'll be the last thing that he does it's just Pete Holmes' head <laughs> Pete Holmes' is, is his head <laughs> all the different Pete Holmes uh, it, you know it, it is though it's supposed to be about five years ago and everybody's kind of playing he themselves. He was already really confident five years ago. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. You're right. And he also, was I was I not him. in Yogi Bear 3D or famous at all when this is all supposed to be taking place. I assume you're taking place now because you're so he, 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 like yeah, now. He's like, he's like messing. Now, yeah. Yeah. He's, but no, but he's messing Pete. with stuff. It's old Pete and then some current people but like Plus, yeah, because you're right. Because on heroin Lane, now, yeah, already kind of plays. It's, no. an, it's an odd time war. Also, <laughs> yeah. it's also Pete saying all these great comedians just all cotton to me. They all want to help me out. Yeah, they yeah, all yeah, are yeah. really interested well, in this yeah, open never micer once experienced that's passing out flyers. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's also yeah, all I, the I, comics I, in America, East Coast, West Coast. Everybody is just what's well, just New York. Everybody's I, in New York. I don't remember <laughs> when I was like barking to try and get spots at a club, like big comedians, like Dave Attell or somebody being like, "Hey, buddy." Can I give you a ride to the show? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, know, yeah, yeah. I tried to say hello to Bobby Kelly and Colin Quinn in Times Square while I was passing out flyers, and they're like, "Hey, fuck you!" <laughs> just kept talking, and I'm like, "Yeah, what, that makes sense." One of my favorite stories uh, is that Louis C.K. This guy in Times Square came up to him and he's like, "Hey, do you like comedy?" <laughs> and Louis's face was on the flyer <laughs> of the people that had performed there, and like, you know, those clubs that are like, we get drop-ins and Chris Tina Rock Faye. is on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she yeah, no, people that do not do stand-up at all. Comes in people here that are dead, Chris Farley. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Farley's appearing tonight as a ghost, an apparition of sorts. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 I loved crashing and people... I think people almost some people liked uh, what I did on that a lot more than Silicon Valley, which premieres this Sunday, and I'm very excited to watch. You are, yeah, I am as a fan. I think it's going to be great. And I'm not one of those guys that watches and kind of goes, "Do you guys watch yourself like and kind of critique yourself and go like, ah, I should have done this differently?" Or yeah, that. I can't really watch myself do anything. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not really one of those people, so I could still watch the show. But the thing is, is if you watch the show and you're in it. You kind of see that scene, and you're like, "Okay, I remember that day, and what was going on with that day, and and so it's just every there's there's you know the mechanics of making the show is kind of present as you're watching it, but now I get to watch it, and I have no idea, you know, but what it's about. Or can what you it's separate be about. yourself entirely, or is part of you going to be like, "That was funny, but nah, it would have been better." No, 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 because I think, and here's what's interesting: there was like an article recently that it seemed like. The girl who wrote it is for the Hollywood Reporter or something. Just seemed like her her main objective was to make me sound like the biggest fucking asshole in the world. And so she used this quote of that where I sounded like a real dick. 
But the one of the producers said that, um, and I don't know why, but he was like, you know, it's the Golden State Warriors of comedy, and I don't think we lost LeBron James. It feels like we lost, and then he named someone else. I don't know anything about sports. And my response to that was, I think all those guys are like the LeBrons of their respective types of comedy. Because right. they're all so different. Right. And so that's kind of what I'm interested in, especially... <clears throat> one of my um, very good friends, Jimmy O. Yang, I'm like excited that he has more screen time. I'm excited that Amanda Crew, who plays Monica on it, has more screen time, Susan Cryer, more screen time. It just seemed like the show was getting so packed. And then I was also, my character was becoming so sad that I would drive home after taping and kind of be in a really sad, depressed... Really? Yeah. Because your character was the one that throughout the show, like, that character is never going to do anything. Well, no, and they and everyone hates him. Right. You know, and so it, it was just like 14 hours of other people pretending to kind of hate me and wish I wasn't there. And this guy trying to make himself useful and sadly, like, having no use or it's any It's like if the rest of the cast on Seinfeld was openly disgusted by Kramer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then just hated Kramer, everything he did. <laughs> Kramer just goes home and is like, oh, no. But I, I, would, I would drive home and then get home and be kind of depressed. And Kate would sort of go... Why you seem like you're in a bad mood? What's going on? And I'm like I'm Ehrlich, you know. It's just like, <laughs> but it, but it really and it and it was becoming it was becoming this thing of like they were really struggling, not struggling, but it felt a lot like there was, um, you know, it felt like the writers were trying to have a reason for Ehrlich to be in the show. Right. So a lot of the storylines sort of incorporated him in weird ways where they'd like bring him in because they'd have to, but then get rid of him and then figure out how to bring him back in. And so I just thought actually the best thing that I could do for the show was like step off after the fourth season because he was becoming sort of extraneous and it was taking screen time away from people who are really funny. Like they do not let Susan Cryer, they give a lot of stuff, but Amanda Crew is really, really funny and they just weren't giving her a lot, I think for time reasons. Sure. I don't think it had anything to do with them sort of feeling like she's not, you know, talented or useful. But so it just, it, it's for all the right reasons. And then also I just wanted to move to New York. I was just like sick of living in Los Angeles. How it's long really are you here for? Couple more days. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I love it here. I, I, you know, I come here as often as I can, especially when they say there's a big storm coming. I like to, <laughs> I like to fly in. big nor'easter like guy. I fly in just to get my shows canceled. <laughs> he, he's always wearing those nor'easter shirts. Yeah. And you, didn't you do a nor'easter <laughs> egg hunt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get a lot more attention for canceled shows than the ones that go off That's right. perfectly. That's right. But uh, the, yeah, it's, it's a good talking said, point. It's interesting you said too about like the, the reporters trying to make you look like an asshole because I was literally reading an article yesterday and the headline is that TJ Miller regrets leaving Silicon Valley. And I'm like, yeah, are they talking? I'm like, is, really? And I, I read the I actually, exit or something. I actually like that. read the article and the quote was from your stand up and it's. The joke was sometimes I regret leaving Silicon Valley because I want all that money for nitrous oxide. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, right, exactly. This isn't real. He didn't no, know. not at all. <laughs> I, I'm starting to realize like the media money, like, doesn't <laughs> get jokes as much as yeah. you would think. That but they, they also do. love misleading headlines. Oh, yeah, they, it's all it's all clickbait now. I mean that the about the begin the premiere of Silicon Valley in the headline was like they talk about T.J. Miller's messy exit and then he was coming but the re you know that he was coming to uh um uh, set when he was like intoxicated and all messy that exit another so, way to say irish goodbye <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i but i, I like i like two things one they're like he was showing up sometimes intoxicated and it's like well first of all i don't work when i'm intoxicated and second of all i was because it slows me down and second of all um because i'm not that good of a comedian whereas you can kind of just get even more high for the second taping of your netflix special um but i also was playing a character who was always high Right. And, but the, uh, the reason that I was like would come exhausted is because I was doing stand up every single night. And, you know, just around Los Angeles, after, I would shoot for 12 to 16 hours and then go do stand up. And then you go would home not and get up at like five in the morning. Right. I had to keep doing stand up. Right. And then on the weekends, I was doing gigs. <clears throat> so I would get back. 
Sunday night, I would figure out a way to do an earlier show on a Sunday and then like fly back that night. And then the calls for for television shows and movies are like five in the morning, six in the morning, that kind of stuff. And so it was just really exhausting. And it got to the point where the math was just sort of. You know, my wife is a mixed media artist. The art world is completely here. I hate, I hate Los Angeles. I love New York. Uh, you can't ca- get a good trombone in Los Angeles. No, no. it's impossible. It's <laughs> impossible. Between, yeah. They're t- they're too tinny. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you I want that yeah. true they're brass sound. Awesome. Like like you want like that nasty sound. That pure, <laughs> it's like pure like water that <laughs> helps to make it's those like the Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so and so, I just felt like if I was going to be spending four or five months out of the year in Los Angeles, every time Kate was going to visit me, it was just like taking away. From what she was doing, because the Los Angeles art scene is just a dump sh- pile of burning shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be too opinionated or right. hyperbolic about it. So but there's, you know, there's no the- there's no reason for her and her gallerists live in London, so they you know to fly to Los Angeles was going to be too difficult. Sure. And so it's just, it just and I I'm from Denver, so I love yeah. like like Doug Benson Denver yeah <laughs> um, like Doug Benson I love a good nor'easter, uh-huh. and we had three this year so that was really it's great. exciting it's great stuff uh, but I like the cold weather so yeah. it, unlike you know some of my friends in Los Angeles who just can't stand it if it's in the 60s you know they're just like oh it's too chilly I don't even want to go outside I I loved the weather yesterday so when you start getting like it was yesterday. Right? Right? Mm-hmm. Was it Nor'easter? Yesterday, two days ago. Yeah. yeah. W- when you start two getting... Two days ago? Two days ago, I think. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, now, listen. I do get intoxicated when I'm not working. I want to make, I make that very clear. Let's be clear. But as soon as I am done here, I'm going straight to the Knickerbocker or some strange <laughs> drinking establishment here in New York. You but could we, use this trombone as like a beer bong. <laughs> That's true. I n- have never thought of that, but we'll definitely do it at when, the next show tonight. At both shows, I will be beer bonging through a slide trombone. When you start getting like like when Deadpool, you can control how fast the beer comes yeah. down <laughs> by sliding. You got a sweet new closer, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly you're, yeah. and you're still Release gonna walk out valve. of the club all wet. <laughs> <laughs> and the second show is gonna be like, what is wrong with this guy? There's He's no part of you that goes like, I, I'm just gonna do these movies. I'm not gonna do stand up anymore. Well. Um, he quits each movie right when they're done. Yeah, yeah. Right? Exactly. <laughs> as, as soon as they wrap, I'm, I'm out finished. of here. Right. I gotta get back. Where um, did you shoot Ready Player One? Um, in actually in England, in right outside of oh, London there you go. at Pinewood Studios, and. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited about that movie. People seem to love it, and it's kind of a return to the Spielberg stuff that I love. Like, yeah. I rewatched Lincoln and Bridge of Spies, and those are both incredible movies, but they're not as much my kind of movies as, like... Because sometimes you just want, like, a popcorn flick just to sit down yeah. and check out yeah. and just have a good time. And that's... And even Spielberg has said, like, this is not a film, this is a movie, and it's a movie based on a book, and it was really interesting to like meet Ernest. Cl- I'd never had the experience. Like, for instance, Office Christmas Party is not based on a novel. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I know. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. Book, exactly. And exactly. I found it. Yeah. And, uh, but this, you know, it was weird to meet the author and then the screenwriter and Spielberg and then also see the three of them kind of powwow and decide like what is the truest version to the book, but also what is best for the movie. Because there's a lot of things that are very different in the movie than in the um, than in the book, and that's because it just worked better for movie stuff. Like, I think a lot of the action sequences are just much, much, much bigger in scale. Do you have enough self-confidence that when you find out Spielberg wants to work with you in a significant way that it's just like, oh, cool, that's 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 about right, or is it still like a trip? I have a weird, well, it's definitely a trip, but I have a weird thing where he's sort of, I met him in the very beginning of my career. I did the show called Carpoolers, and he produced it. Hmm. And, and his wife, also named Kate, also an artist, um, for some reason, I don't know why, but she was a big fan of me on that show. And then I don't know why, but Steven Spielberg, I just really tickle his funny bone. And one of, <laughs> one of my favorite things is to, I always use his full name when I talk to him. Right. 
right. So I'll be like, I, like when I was there after the first day, halfway through the day, I said to him, Steven Spielberg, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for having me in your movie, Steven Spielberg, because this is, and he kind of said, he was like, oh yeah, there was no one else. We wrote this part for you. That was a trip for sure. That's yeah. Awesome. But he, you know, it was, it was one of those things where he didn't he, acknowledge he that you also, were calling he, him Steven Spielberg at the time. No, I think that that's, he thinks things like that are funny. He's he actually like kind of yeah. a silly dude. I have a great, <clears throat> Very awkward Steven Spielberg story, um, where uh, that you know has to do with Steven Spielberg, and uh, <laughs> and so he does this thing where if it's not working exactly how he wants it to, he'll shoot it, which is something that Michael Bay does also. So he'll actually operate the camera, and then um, if that still doesn't work, this is all real. He'll go like this. He'll be like. Okay, I think this is a Cheetos moment. Can somebody bring me a bag of Cheetos? And then somebody immediately brings him a bag of Cheetos. And, you know, I think in some ways, like, Bay is like this and Wahlberg is like this. Is like, the, I, I tease them a lot. And I don't think anybody really teases those people because right. they're so intimidated by them or they just feel like they don't want to offend them. And so, and but I think of them sort of as kings and I'm a jester, so why wouldn't I? Right. Yeah, you're like Rickles. Yeah, exactly. Rickles exactly. Uh, was everybody huge. He could insult them and they yeah, loved it. Johnny Carson, he would just like take cigarettes from his desk. Yeah. And so, um, so I, I said to Steven Spielberg, and I, I said, so Steven Spielberg is is this are these crunchy Cheetos or are these puffy Cheetos? And he's like, oh no, no 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 crunchy crunchy. And I was like, thank goodness, if it was puffy, I might have walked off set. And, uh, <laughs> and and so then later I kind of teased him about that and he did he ate the Cheetos and then he got the shot and they were able to move on like and that's it really I mean, I got Cheeto to, dust I the camera. So, so was it a Cheetos moment yeah you'll see it in the actual movie there's like orange dust all over <laughs> a couple of the scenes and um, it's like when but, water gets on the lens but he would, so I was like was it a Cheetos moment and he said, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, it really worked. And I said, do you have a lot of those? And he goes, every so often. So then I went and I was just watching. Uh, it was like a day that I wasn't working, but I just wanted to watch Ben Mendelsohn because I just am fascinated by him. He's this, like, can play the scariest psychopathic people. And then, you know, off camera, Sweet he's just wa yeah, he's walking in and just, like, singing. And he would call Steven Spielberg dad. He would be like, if daddy's happy, then I'm happy. <laughs> Um, but so I was just watching him work and then, um, he did it again. He was like, all right, I think this is a Cheetos moment. Can somebody bring me a Cheetos and an A&W root beer? And I said, man, you really like, like Americana stuff. And he's like, I don't know. I just like things that are American. And I was like, I bet you love American graffiti. He was like, yeah. And I said, so this is a Cheetos moment. I get to witness a second Cheetos moment. And he goes, you know what? Bring TJ some Cheetos also. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, they, so they brought me some Cheetos. So we're both eating crunchy Cheetos and they're moving the cameras around. It was the, it was the strangest experience I've ever had and uh, absolutely one of the best. But we're both sort of sitting there and talking, and then we're kind of quiet for a little while. And then he just kind of looks at me, and he takes some of the Cheetos out of his bag, and he puts them in my bag, and then he just kind of looks at me, and I didn't know what to do, so I took some of the Cheetos out of my bag and put them in his bag. This is all real. And he goes, he just looks me dead in the eyes and he goes, there, now we're Cheetos brothers. <laughs> yeah, and, like a and, and then he walked away. That was it. And then he walked away. Yeah. And so I bring that up all the time. I'm like, Steven Spielberg, He's my, my Cheetos, Cheetos brother. brother. <laughs> That's amazing. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> well, so that, that was definitely one of the most awkward because it yeah. seemed like he thought that I knew what to do that like Cheetos Brothers is a, just a part it's of a thing yeah it's a thing and I have never heard of such a thing <laughs> no I've never heard of anything like that I've only heard of Eskimo Brothers and that's really really it's weird totally different and also somebody bragged about that to me one time and I was like you're the grossest person <laughs> I've ever yeah. met yikes